Continuing with the program, we will have the presentation Soil Sense Abilities and um, Multi Species Approach to Caring for Futures by Dr. Sana Barrineau, whom we will present below. Uh, Sana Barrineau is a first year PhD research at University of the Sunshine Coast. Australia as part of the Mistro Environmental Communication Research Program. Her research focuses on carbon farming in Sweden and Australia and investigate how we make embrace diverse ways of knowing through knowledge co-production to support the co-design of pathways to sustainable futures. Sana is exploring this context through anticipatory and feminist lenses and is interested in how we can disrupt modern utopian thinking to embrace more collaborative and sense of ways of being in the world. Uh, you have approximately 30, 13 minutes to complete your presentation. 30 minutes uh, to complete your presentation. Please uh, share uh, your presentation. Great, thank you. All right, I hope you can see my screen now. Um, really nice to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, welcome to this story about carbon farming futures. Um, my name is Sanna Berno. I'm a first year PhD candidate uh, and in this, presentation, I would like to offer some starting points for thinking with the methodolog methodological potential of anticipatory aesthetics in arenas fraught with complex climate and, and equity issues. Carbon farming is a growing construction site of futures. And in my PhD research, my colleagues and I are working collaboratively with stakeholders in, carbon, in the carbon farming arena in Sweden as part of an exploration into environmental communication and investigating how we might embrace diverse ways of knowing through knowledge co-production. I'm working with futures and futures methods uh, in my data analysis and design of workshops with stakeholders and using futures thinking to try to crack open what is so far a climate mitigation effort struggling to innovate in the shadow of hegemonic ideals around agriculture, modeling markets and techno optimism. Carbon farming, however, also has huge potential in inviting us humans to relate differently to a lively planet and to care for the future. So in this presentation, I'll just say a few things about uh, carbon farming, what it is, and how the emerging practices and narratives there may be shaping futures, but focusing in particular on soil. Um, and I will say um, some of my very initial ideas um, around how I'm starting to think with future senses in implementing workshops for the stakeholders that that I'm working with in this in this context in Sweden. And I hope this presentation can leave you with some some questions and uh, and hopefully some inspiration to to stay with the trouble. Uh, so just to um, give you a, a brief idea about where um, how I'm approaching my my research, um, the first point is that human-caused climate change can be understood as an intensification of colonial-induced environmental change and is a relational tipping point which has already been reached. And therefore, we need research approaches that are decolonial and relational. My second um, point of departure is that future studies, images, and activities are largely devoid of feminist issues and therefore construct silences by not elaborating on social or gendered preconditions or consequences of technological developments. And as such, we need approaches that open up for a plurality of understandings of time, temporality and futures and ask ourselves who is invited to make futures and whose futures get to be made. Right, my presentation is just stuck, there we go. So now we are entering the context of carbon farming, where regenerative agricultural practices are used with the aim to restore carbon and other greenhouse gases in soils to draw down emissions and to increase food security. These are practices that are becoming part of government strategies to combat climate change and food insecurity, 
and are shaping the futures of agriculture and the emerging bioeconomy. In my work, I reflect on carbon farming as an arena where we take care of futures. So quite explicitly, this is a climate mitigation strategy to ensure life on the future planet, but it goes deeper than that too, I think. Um, in thinking about, for example, well, what does the soil need to be healthy? How can we take better care of or be better stewards of the land? And how does soil take care of us? So how can we, um, so what I have found is that it's very, th it's been very helpful to, to think with um, educational and futures theorist, uh, Deborah Osberg, who asks, if we take seriously the notion that we cannot know what the needs of the future are, and that we therefore cannot act in any calcula calculated way to meet those needs, then how can we take care of futures in ways that are radically open? Her concept of symbiotic anticipation has offered me much to think with on this topic. For her, the call to generate a symbiotic relationship is a call to play with the possibility of what is not yet needed, embodying the logic of togetherness with difference. So this is a playful rather than an instrumenter, instrumental or normative logic catalyzed by symbiosis. And it's an invitation to experiment, not just with what is strictly necessary or needed, but crucially what is not yet possible and what cannot yet be imagined. So alongside this thinking, I would like to propose that to care for futures in ways that are radically open requires approaches characterized by relational ethics. Informed by Indigenous scholar Dwayne Donald, um, Dwayne Donald's relational ethics, he writes, it is an ethical imperative to see that despite our varied place-based cultures and knowledge systems, we live in a world together with others and must constantly think and act with reference to these relationships. Any knowledge we gain about the world interweaves us more complexly with these relationships and gives us life. With this form of relationality, we awaken the embodied knowledge of our vulnerabilities, our interdependencies, and our responsibilities. So rather than dictating a certain way of being, of being responsible, of being accountable, acting just or caring that is universal, this is contextually specific and cannot be just transplanted into different spaces and places. Therefore, when we ask questions about how we care for futures, we are asking the question, how do we see ourselves in multi-species collaborations? This is where the concept of future senses, of yearning, optimism, voice, memory, and foresight come in as an opportunity to, quote, activate the transgressive dimension of anticipation and free it from a single system of interpretation, end quote. These senses form a basis of anticipatory aesthetics, which can help us take care of the future, which is key in climate transformations, because they are processes of engagement that connect us to others, and that can help us remember that the future is a social production, as Bio um, told us in his keynote presentation. So a key question that I'm taking forward is, since carbon farming is an arena where we're trying to take care of futures, how can we do this in ways that are radically open? Okay, but let me contextualize this quite abstract stuff um, by introducing carbon farming a bit more thoroughly. So carbon farming is, as a material practice, um, we're working here specifically with the carbon cycle. So how one manages the land will influence the ins and outs of carbon moving through the system. So planting perennials and trees, for example, has the potential to sequester carbon deep in soils through its undisturbed root system. But soil as a carbon sink is but one story. There are many narratives of change emerging here, and these are some that I have gathered from the literature and from um, EU government documentation, for example, around, around carbon farming. And there's a lot of resources being invested here to improve knowledge and technology for how best to support carbon sequestration. However, it's a field full of tensions. But where I'm finding the most generative place to start thinking about futures here are the weak signals that are emerging around soil food webs, 
where whispers of organizational revolution that disturb the false boundaries of human and help reorient our collective imagination are starting to really get louder. These are the narratives where we are part of nature cultures and interrelated communities with life in the soil. And instead of separating nature and society, the creative and multi-layered practices involved in carbon farming can effectively lead to economies where connections and relationships are central. So from these narratives that I've just shared, um, I interpret around two or three clusters that I'm starting, which I'm starting to play with. Um, the first one is soil is the other. So it is outside of us. It is something that we manage and control using our economic systems and our scientific models. These are the dominant framings and visions of the growing arenas in carbon farming currently and are limiting the emergence of alternative futures imaginaries that are able to really respond to climate change. A second cluster of, of visions or narratives is the soil food web, um, which is our visions of total collaboration, where we humans are insiders in a greater community of practice and in the soil food web. And here we're using more than instruments to build understanding and relationship with the incredible heterogeneity of soil and can access a range of data that isn't simply cognitive. And thirdly, um, we have some kind of transitional vision um, or cluster. And this is a place somewhere in between and overlapping with the above two clusters. It's a bit lumpy and contentious, but it is in this cluster um, of visions that I actually think we're muddling in um, at the moment and which I think can be extremely generative. But I think that we need to pull some thinking out of the second cluster so that we can ask questions pertaining to the relational and to caring for futures. For example, what does it take to engage with the thick present full of its demanding attachments? Carbon farming draws our attention to time and temporality in ways that the economies and practices around traditional farming tend to hide. There are different time commitments in carbon farming. Carbon farming is useless if you can release the carbon from the soil later on. It must stay in the ground. So rather than sowing and caring for the land for the foreseeable future, carbon farming asks farmers to sequester our pasts permanently, employing soil to quickly take back what was so hastily removed from its depths. And now I want to turn to the second cluster to ask the question, how might future census awaken us to the living soil community that we are a part of? I approach future senses, which form the basis of anticipatory aesthetics following Marcus Bussey by using it as a critical process of engagement. According to Bussey, anticipation is an aesthetic dimension of human identity, meaning that it involves making emotional and normative judgments which are shaped by nature cultures as cultures always act in relationship to the material world. This is at the core of human experience and cultural creativity. And these are the senses that help us make choices in the world. And when activated, these senses can help us hopefully transgress dominant systems of interpretation by igniting creativity as well as hope. So it has the capacity to disrupt cultural reference and social imaginaries that delineate possibilities and limits of our, potential, of our personal, social, and cultural creativity. So our big challenge here is to find ways to engage with anticipatory aesthetics. These, so these are the senses. Um, these senses are some of the ways that we are responding to the world. We navigate our choices based on experiences, needs, and future anticipations. These are memory and foresight. Folded between memory and foresight, uh, then is our conceptual making apparatus, the future sense of, of voice. And voice is the capacity to act in one's context, to choose, to analyze, articulate, synthesize, and, and mobilize. The senses of optimism and yearning, these senses are driven by the desire to break limits. Um, as an example, how can we engage with the anticipatory potential of, of memory? 
Uh, this is cultural data that we are working with. And while the past can be a rich source of futures imaginaries, often we are conditioned by the past to think in silos or to understand fictions by a narrative that are put into the service of the powerful, which obscures possibilities and alternative imaginaries. About his own classroom, Bussey writes that to develop this sense involves pedagogy that is reflexive on how we are complicit in the experience of reality and that challenges these deceptions to disturb the sanitized memories of the present. So memory work, this often involves pain and shame, according to Marcus, and is as a reminder of past deeds, for example, colonialism and other types of violence. So to quote Bussey, what, when memory is understood as a future sense that plays a powerful role in value systems, priorities, and decision-making, foresight practitioners can disrupt hegemonic memory patterns and effectively release distortions that impact on anticipatory judgment. So thinking practically then in the context of carbon farming, where we have stakeholders ranging from soil scientists to bureaucrats to entrepreneurs to farmers, what are the sorts of cultural data, narratives, and experienced realities that exist within this group? How might anticipatory memory be a way to bring in the language of transformation? And how are we communicating about what needs to happen and why? What are the reference points people have or the default positions in the imagination here? These are the things that imagination turns to and where memory kicks in and where there is the opportunity to play with differences and commonalities. The hegemonies existing in the carbon farming arena are effective silencers, and that's where thinking with soil can be useful to engage with memory, as well as the other senses. So what are the cultural data that soil can draw our senses to? What are we able to sense by thinking with soil? Tirani and colleagues argue that soil is a rich milieu for rendering visible the logics of entanglement and codependence, uh, which points to the possibility of broadening conceptions to conceptions of and relations to soil. So soil, this draws attention to multiple layers of realities and alternatives. Also, Maria Puy de la Pelacasa points out that what soil is thought to be affects the ways in which it is cared for and vice versa. Modes of care have effects on what soil becomes. So what has soil become in our culture and how do we care for soil? Do we care for soil? Working through narratives we have built, a, built around soil in our Western culture can help us think about the values, priorities, and decision-making processes imbued in this context in a way that may thicken the present with its myriad of demanding attachments. So what are the patterns we notice when we notice the rhythms of soil temporalities, which challenge dominant narratives of futures oriented and techno science driven human soil relations? <laughs> Along with many others as seen on this slide, plus more, I see much potential in welcoming soils as active collaborators in life in a climate changing world. These are just some of the generative questions and thoughts around soil that can awaken our aesthetic sensibilities. Firstly, what could it mean to collaborate with soils rather than seeing soils as an inert container for our waste, in this case, our residual emissions? Or along similar lines, how can thinking with Anna Singh's concept of alienation or making a unit commensurable, making soils across the world commensurable, disentangling carbon to make it an asset and cranking it through this capitalist machine, how can this be a way to evoke the senses? Or possibly, what if we see soil as a meshwork or an assemblage, as a multi-species commons, which are symbols of alternative ecological involvement? These, how can these pull our senses into play in different ways? And finally, what are the possibilities of a different quality of attentiveness invited by the above alternatives? This requires diverse knowledge practices, both intellectual and embodied, and might be possible through creative visualization, storytelling, and narrative, which can help with building voice and a sense of agency. From here, I think the rays of critical hope might just be visible. 
So thinking with the lenses of future senses and anticipatory aesthetics have so far contributed to my thinking by enable me to craft more affective pathways around thinking about communication. So the movements pointing out that nature and culture are not separate continue to gain momentum and create possibilities for new socio-ecological systems to emerge. In engaging with these futures tools, I so far feel reluctant to suggest or believe that this kind of work will make a difference to the very precarious situations that many farmers find themselves in. There are some serious issues of power at play in the evolving systems around carbon farming and agricultural systems, but powerful grassroots imaginaries do exist, and I hope that this kind of work can create space for the dominant stories to be disrupted. What I think this kind of futures work can contribute with is a new kind of collective attention to the thick present, the richness of the meanwhile, that can be awakened by this anticipatory sensibility presented today, allowing us to care for the futures in ways that are radically open. So thanks um, for listening and thanks also to my colleagues, um, Marcus Bussey, Stina Powell, Taudo, Neil Powell, and Max Whitman for supporting me in this work so far. Thanks very much.